I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about should I break no contact for just Valentine's Day? All major holidays or birthdays are really scary when you're going through a breakup. And Valentine's Day may be one of the worst, if not the worst, for many of you guys. Why? Because, of course, it's about love. It's a holiday about love, where essentially we're celebrating our love for somebody. And now... We're in a situation where we're dealing with a breakup with somebody that we obviously loved or cared a great deal about and we're really attached to. So now you're tormented on how to handle it. And I know because I have been in that situation and it puts a tremendous amount of stress on us, uh, an overwhelming amount of pressure on us on how to handle things and we don't know what to do, we get confused, we're scared, we don't want to make things worse than they already are, and I get that. So, I'm going to talk about that in this video, and I do realize that there'll probably be a lot of new people coming to the channel, because there are a lot of breakups around Valentine's Day. So, I'm expecting a lot of people that don't really have an understanding of how I teach no contact and what it is. So I'm going to explain that just a little bit for the new people to the channel, okay? Because I know you guys are really in a tough situation where you're sitting there going back and forth. What do I do? Do I reach out just to let them know I'm thinking about them? Because you're thinking, well, if I let them know that I'm thinking about them, that's going to make them think about me. Well, I really believe that that person is going to be thinking about you even more if you don't reach out. Because I really believe that anxiety has a massive impact on us and our desire to be with somebody. And when somebody sees that you are moving on, they're going to be impacted by it. When you're letting them know that you're still wanting to be in their life, they're kind of, meh, I, it wasn't working. And they kind of have that attitude. You don't want them to have that attitude. Like, meh. No, you want them to miss you like you're missing them. So I've got two quick emails, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about this more. Um, I did put out a newsletter the other day for Valentine's Day. Uh, I always forget to tell you guys, but if you go to AskCraig.net and you scroll down to the bottom, you can sign up for the newsletter. I don't spam. In fact, I rarely even send you guys emails. And you guys who are a part of the email list are probably like, do you ever send anything? I'm so busy, I can't keep up. I know a lot of people out there will spam you every single day. That's the last thing that's going to happen from me. I'm just too busy. And um, so... Get on there and just go to AskCraig.net, scroll to the bottom. It takes you like literally five seconds. You just enter in your email. You'll be on my email list, okay? And so, I, you know, if I ever need to, you know, share an extra video or an article or event or anything, you can get the information there. So they said, great timing, coach. This is a particularly hard month for me because it's the anniversary of when my ex must have met his new girlfriend and dis decided to split with me. It's driving me crazy wondering if this date or other was the day that they met. Then the anniversary of our split is coming up before the end of the month. All can things considered, I'm doing quite well but feeling very delicate. Your thoughtfulness is much appreciated. Friends and family just don't give this get the suffering goes deeper than just 
being single on Valentine's Day. Glad to have you on our side. Blessings to you and Margaret. Thank you so much for those very kind words. And you're right. Your friends simply don't get it. Your family simply doesn't get it. They'll be like, oh, a lot of people are single on Valentine's Day. Don't worry about that. It's not about that. It's about missing that person intensely and deeply and on a level that you cannot understand unless you're going through it. And while they try and say things to comfort you, it often just irritates you, pisses you off, and makes you want to say, I'm done. I can't even have this conversation with you anymore, right? Uh, I got a second quick email that said, Hi, Craig. I really wanted to say how much you've helped me in the last month without even knowing it. I was so devastated after the breakup, but then I found your channel. I bought two different guides on how to get my ex back, but they were both confusing and made the situation get worse. Thanks to you, I have some hope back. You've given me the patience of waiting for him to be ready and above all, the motivation to change my life for good. And that is what I'm so proactive about, is not just trying to help you get an ex back. Because, I, of course, I want to help you do that, but I really want to help you change your life. And I really want to completely change your world on everything you've ever known about relationships by teaching you about attachment and attachment trauma and attachment styles and love language and how to communicate better and how to learn better emotional self-control. All of those things. I mean, the, the mental health aspect that Margaret and I teach together on, you know, depression and anxiety and all the things that come along with that. We're so focused on giving you so much information that it can help you literally change your entire life. And that is where we want you to be, is six months from now, so completely different inside that you feel like a new person. And just about everybody that I talk with feels like that within just a few months of coming across the channel. So we're trying to keep you positive. We're trying to keep you focused on yourself because if you are focused on yourself, you're going to get a victory, okay? You may not get an X back. There's no guarantees with that. But if you focus on learning and educating yourself and learning to be a better partner and learning about your own needs and what you need from your partner and all the unconscious things you've done in your relationships over and over and over again without even realizing it, you're going to be a far better version of yourself than you could have ever imagined. And read the comments. You'll see the people that have been on the channel for a while. They'll tell you themselves. So, um, thank you for these kind words. Uh, they said a little bit more. They said, I just can't wait to email you my success story and to book a Skype coaching. While I wait, I just wanted to ask you if you could do an Instagram account for live videos and suggestions. Thank you so much for everything. Well, unfortunately, I simply don't have the time to do that with Instagram. Um, I barely do any social media as it is because I'm always just focused on good content. And it's a lot. Doing daily videos with the level of content that I'm trying to put out, it's a lot. You know, it takes me hours to film and edit and upload the videos for you guys every day on top of all the Skypes and the email coachings and even trying to have a personal life, which is like this, right? Um, but it's worth it. It's worth it. And I love uh, the, the work that I put out there and I love the support and talking with you guys every day. So I know how scary Valentine's Day is. And... We put a lot of meaning on that day, and we obsess over it. Like, we, you, I'm sure, are sitting at home just putting tremendous amounts of pressure on how to handle this day. Um, like, thinking, well, if we don't talk on Valentine's Day, that means we're really done here. It's n never going to turn around. We're never going to wind up getting back together. 
that it's truly over. That is a story that you're telling yourself, and it's simply not the case. I can tell you that there will be many of you that do not talk to your ex for Valentine's Day, and they'll still come back again. In fact, not hearing from you is going to have a big impact on them, where they're sitting around missing you as well, okay? So, I know that you can't help obsess over what they're doing for Valentine's Day. You're probably wondering where they're going, who they're going out with, if they found somebody new, knowing they're going out on a date with somebody new. It's, it's very painful. It's very difficult. You'll start obsessing and looking at their Snapchat or their Instagram or their Facebook and you may see them post vague pictures of a, of a rose or some flowers or some chocolates and now you really start to panic. Oh, who is this? Who's giving them roses? Who's giving them chocolate? Well, you know, sometimes people do that for themselves because they like the attention. They don't want to look lonely. So keep that in mind. I've seen people do that before. And I've had people who did that before. <laughs> that they posted stuff, pictures of uh, roses that they bought themselves and posted on Snapchat or Instagram just so they didn't look lonely. Um, so, I know you're also probably thinking a lot about how they should be with you on such a special day, and you'll probably think about how you have spent Valentine's Day together with them in the past. All of these things are very normal. Don't beat yourself up. All of you guys are doing it, and I completely understand why you would. I mean, uh, I would be thinking, and, and I remember feeling like, how could my ex not want to be with me on this day? Right? Like on a special day like Christmas or a birthday. It just, it just didn't make any sense to me. Like, I love this person so much. And I'm willing to literally do anything to get this person back. And yet they don't even want to talk to me. It was devastating. And it's one of the most painful things you could experience. Is loving somebody and wanting to be in a relationship. Or be committed to somebody or you know whatever. And they want nothing to do with you. It's just it hurts so bad. And we're wired to attach. So, you have to understand that the way human beings are built is to attach to loved ones. There is nothing wrong with being devastated, sad, depressed, feeling guilty, doing all those things over somebody that you love. As a matter of fact, there's probably something wrong with you if you're not de depressed or devastated over a breakup. Because... We're meant to attach to our loved ones. And when we lose them, every fiber of our being is like on high alert. We feel like we're in danger. That death is literally taking over us. And massive amounts of anxiety. And of course, part of that is if you've had attachment trauma in your childhood that you know, you were hurt and you were abandoned, you didn't feel loved or you were neglected, you weren't taken care of. And so all of those overwhelming feelings, it's trauma. All of that trauma and those symptoms of those traumas come up and just completely take over your body. It feels like you're being hijacked and obtrusive, in, uh, obsessive thinking. It's very frustrating and very difficult. It's torture. It literally feels like hell in your own body. Um, so, I do have an entire playlist about no contacts, if you don't know the basics. But basically, why I really believe in no contact has a lot to do with the way we are wired and separation anxiety. And so, and also not settling for something that doesn't work for you. And so, I really think that if somebody breaks up with you and they end the relationship with you, that you need to have respect for yourself and say, look, I love you, I would love to work it out with you, but if, if that's not what you want, I understand, and then walk away from the situation. The begging, 
the pleading, the manipulating, it doesn't work. This is far more effective saying to somebody, look, I would love to work this out, but you know, I respect your decision and if you change your mind, let me know. And then you can possibly try and work things out with them at a later date. But, but I really believe that if you break no contact on Valentine's Day just for Valentine's Day, it's simply letting that person know that you are hung up on them, you still desperately want to be with them, and it really just doesn't do anything to make them want you more. It may turn them off, it may lower their interest level. And so you are in a situation where you are in contact with that person and they are reaching out to you and, you know, there's some communication going on there. Maybe they're making an effort to see you or, you know, something is going on there. Then maybe reach out. But you're in a situation where they have ended the relationship and they're not wanting to talk to you and not wanting to work things out with you then you're going to have to just be strong and say, okay, you know, they're not going to get to see me on Valentine's Day. It's going to be their loss. <laughs> no, in the back of your mind that they might have had a lot of fun with you if they did go out with you, but had the attitude like their loss. So, if you want to get my help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching. I do Skype coaching. And if you got to get with me right away, I do offer emergency Skype coaching, which I suspect some of you that hear from your ex are going to be wanting to do when they reach out. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.